Thank you, Polly. Now, of course, there's only one place to start, and that's the total and utter chaos in the Conservative Party. Rishi Sunak is facing outright revolt after his emergency legislation to stop the boats. But less than 24 hours after his immigration minister, Robert Jemrick, dramatically quit, the Prime Minister said they've gone as far as they can and insisted the new bill will work. The government has introduced the toughest anti-illegal immigration law ever. This bill blocks every single reason that has ever been used to prevent flights to Rwanda from taking off. As the Rwandans themselves have made clear, if we go any further, the entire scheme will collapse. And there is no point having a bill with nowhere to send people to. But I'm telling you now, we have set the bar so high that it will be vanishingly rare for anyone to meet it. Vanishingly rare. OK, well, let's find out about that, because I'm joined now by the barrister and writer Stephen Barrett, a guy who takes the BS out of the barrister system. Stephen, I always rely on you to cut through the grease, analyse things apolitically and get to the truth. Let's start with the very obvious question. Um, is the bar set so high, it's vanishingly rare that anybody will be able to contest it if they're deported, or are there still sufficient loopholes to allow the lawyers to play havoc and stop the flights getting off the ground if this bill were to pass? So, firstly, just thank you for the faith that, that you put in me. And I, I want everybody to know I do take that very seriously. And that's why I, I do have to give my honest opinion on things. I'm afraid that I think that there are too many holes in this bill and that it will once again fail. And I think that there are... I put the errors into two different categories. So there are, there are drafting errors and things that I think just in the ordinary course of a bill you can you can just make better and then there are some real sort of substantive issues um, on, on the drafting issues I, I mean the, there's an issue with how they deal with the fact that Rwanda is a safe place which is what they want to assert and just the way that they've written it I think it will lead to challenge and I, I think it needs to be toughened up on the drafting and there's an ouster clause in there which is you know if you want to be tough with the courts then that is that is a good thing but I think the ouster clause needs a bit of, of toughening up in our domestic courts the most likely challenge is over is over the fact issue but then they've also decided not to um, remove the opportunity for a declaration of incompatibility so it seems inevitable that some group will rush off and try and get a declaration of incompatibility. The Home Secretary's had to say that this doesn't comply. So it's quite likely that a UK court will say this, the, give a de declaration that the bill does not comply with human rights law, which, whilst it has no legal effect, will have a big political effect. I mean, imagine that the, the headlines after that. I um, was listening to, to commercial music radio yesterday, and one of the few things that cut through onto their brief news a bulletin was was the idea um, that, that that the bill might be illegal in some way, and if there's a declaration of incompatibility by a court, then I suspect that's going to be quite a big um, a big issue. I think the government is inviting to be publicly shamed by by not excluding that clause, and I think that's just again that, that I put that at the drafting level. So largely, the UK courts can be fixed as issues can be fixed at the, at the drafting level. There's a very serious issue with the European Court of Human Rights. And you can see this because the Prime Minister had to return to it again today. He has conceded that the European Court shouldn't be able to interfere by interim measures. Now, that's absolutely right, and I don't even think that the Court has the legal powers to have interim measures. You know, but there we are. That's absolutely right. But interim just means temporary. Just for your listeners to understand, if I'm running a case, then it, it goes from beginning to end. And if I do anything in the middle, then that's interim. And we have interim hearings, which are in, in the middle. But we still have that end hearing. We still have that, that final point. And the ECHR, the European Court, can just expedite its processes. If it wants to cause merry havoc, it can just have a really fast process from start to end and then say, ah, oh, wait, we considered it all in full. Here we are. Here, you know, we say you can't send planes. And so the, the issue, that, that issue is obvious, and that's why the Prime Minister was sort of um, addressing with it. But you can't solve a legal problem with political threats, just, just as, you know, we do have to pull the two apart. And I'm afraid that that is a gaping hole in the bill. Another one has come up. Um, I was made aware of it um, by a, a group in Northern Ireland. I should, I should credit them for their for, for noticing. I'm not, I'm not claiming to be, you know, an absolute genius on everything, but because of the Windsor Framework and the Withdrawal Agreement Act, 
there are fund there are said to be fundamental laws applying in Northern Ireland, which are the preserve of the European Union. Now, does anybody trust the European Union's court, which is, by the way, a court which has never knowingly said it doesn't have power over anything? It's never knowingly resisted. It's never done that thing that Gandalf does with the ring and say, oh, no, actually, this is not for me. You know, they, they, this court's more, much more golem like It <laughs> goes, for, goes for power like, like nobody's business. Do we really trust the European Court of Justice to not simply say, oh, well, in Northern Ireland, our fundamental rights mean that this law doesn't apply, which, which again, is a gaping wound. I mean, that will, be, that will be catastrophic for any British government were that to go through. And I think those two... The European Court of Human Rights issue and the, Euro the EU issue, they seem to me to be the fundamental ones, the substantive ones. OK, so, Stephen, the £155 million question, because that's what has been spent on this Rwanda plan so far, in a nutshell, is this Rwanda V2? Does it mean that British law is sovereign? Does it mean that British law is supreme? Or is it still at the mercy of European law? And therefore, is it doomed to fail? Well, our law is sovereign, but our politicians are not choosing to behave as though it's sovereign. So they are still compromising and they are still refusing to stand up and assert that we are a supreme um, and sovereign state, which, which we are. I mean, I don't, that's not a political statement. That's a legal statement. And I've always been very clear when I make political statements or when I make legal statements. And, and it needs now our politicians, if they wish to do that, if they wish to stop illegal immigration by small boats, then they need to recognise and admit that they are sovereign, that Parliament is sovereign, and to actually stand up and do things. As I said, the, the UK courts, if they solve some drafting issues, I don't think the UK courts will, will, will cause hell. I mean, they, they don't want to. We, thank goodness, have courts that just do law. But the European Court of Human Rights and now the, the European Court of Justice, their, their ability to meddle in this is very troubling indeed and is, a, is an open wound. It's, it's like having a castle and, and just not completing the wall. You know, this is a, a big gap and it's someone's going to march through it. That's my fear. And, Stephen, that's before this even goes through the laws, because for sure, as night follows day, the laws will water this down, they will tinker with that. They did that with V1, they tried to do it with Brexit, and round and round we go, Groundhog Day again. In your expert opinion, this Rwanda V2, it seems doomed. If, if they will stand up, if our members of parliament, if our government will stand up and admit they are sovereign and be tough, then they can force things through the Lords. We have mechanisms for doing it. We've had constitutional issues before. You know, we, we, the House of Lords has a tendency to turn into a chamber full of rich people who think they know best. And it doesn't really matter whether that's 19th century landowners or, you know, the people who are in it today. That's, that's the very nature of, of, of the beast. So, of course, we have constitutional mechanisms to push through. But again, it requires political will. And all I can ever do is say to the politicians, well, look, you've got the power. You know, and I'm not saying use it because I'm, I'm not endorsing the Rwanda plan. I take no position at all. But, you know, if they want to use it, they, they can and they should. But it's about time for somebody to actually do something. Because otherwise, if, if this bill gets watered down and then goes through and then fails in a court a, a few years from now, I think that could be catastrophic for the country. And so, Stephen, even before this bill is watered down in the Lords, let's do some um, role play here, shall we? Um, just say you are a barrister, a lawyer, a lefty lawyer, whatever you want to call them, who's been assigned to attack this legislation to make sure it goes down, or specifically to make sure that your client, an illegal immigrant to the UK, can contravene it, get around it. How easy is this legislation for you as an expert to attack? In its current form, you'd have routes through the UK courts, you'd have routes through the European courts, both of them, um, and you'd use, you would use all those options. I mean, I, I do this all the time. This is why I don't take political positions. I'm quite often, you know, I could be instructed by either side in something. I, I need to, to, to remain neutral. And then and then part of my job is, is to play devil's advocate and think, well, what, what are the arguments on the other side? And I'm afraid at the moment, it's in its current form, and it... You know, the Prime Minister's right, it is the toughest bill we've ever seen, but it's just got holes in it that people will exploit. So, you know, some, some of those can be fixed, but yeah, at the moment, a, a, a determined lawyer acting on behalf of their clients, a perfectly non-political one, would use all the options um, that this bill represents, and there are, there are many. This is not watertight as it is, and it could well get worse, and 
it needs toughening up. Well, Stephen Barrett, barrister and writer, thank you as ever for a full, frank and honest and I think quite harrowing overview of this bill. It's got holes in it. It can be attacked. It's like building a castle without building the walls. There you go. I think once again we are marching towards inevitable disaster. It just feels